Disable audio control. Please enter your audio pin followed by the pound or hash sign. I don't sound here. Let me share my screen. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. So you guys uh, must have got your uh, assignment. Uh, let's check your email. So I'll send you your first assignment. Uh, it's based on custom fields, custom lists, custom records, and custom forms, even custom subtabs. So good luck with it. And uh, if you have any questions regarding your assignment, just uh, shoot me an email and I'll respond back to you guys. So we started uh, our development uh, part last week and we've seen what are client scripts. So client scripts are uh, that make uh, validations and uh, uh, which auto populate things on the field itself, on the forms. So that's what we've seen last time. And on client scripts we have very different functions. Uh, if we just few visit them, this is where we want it. Go back to client filter. Client. Okay, let's open any client script. So we've seen there are different functions. Page in it uh, it triggers uh, when a record is loaded or initialized. Save record when you click the save button on any for any record, uh, this function gets triggered. Validate field. Uh, remember when you're about to enter a value in a field and field changed when the value is already changed in a field post searching when searching is done in selection of a field value all the sourcing fields are set right then this function triggers line in it so when you are about to enter a line uh, add a new line or enter edit a line or when you are approaching a line when your cursor gets into the line uh, that's called line initialization and that's when this function will trigger line in it Validate line when you click ok or add on that line after entering all the values. That's when this function triggers Validate means set. This is when you are uh, trying to uh, You edit the transaction and then you are adding a new line. So that is valid insert function Validate delete uh, when you edit a record and you are trying to delete any line which is already set and recalc when the total amount changes uh, that's when this uh, function triggers so what happens when all these functions trigger whatever logic is inside that function it gets triggered it, uh, it it gets implemented like it can be any logic it can be simple logic of setting a field value or it can be very complex complex logic of you can have like thousands of lines of code thousand lines of code uh, with complex logic so don't get scared whenever you see some huge code be happy after five years of working on next field whenever i see a huge code i feel very happy it's very fun to go through each line of code and trying to it's like a puzzle when you have in front of you huge amount of lines of code create like a puzzle try to solve it what that uh, thousand lines of code is trying to do so that's how you learn uh, how to script how to write coding so we've seen client scripts. So let's look at the next script type. Go to lists. So after client scripts, let's look at the important, uh, the most commonly used script type that is user event. So what are user events? This trigger on it's the name itself says user event. So whenever the user is doing something like you have uh, records, all our transactions or anything, like any record, customer or vendor or employee or any transaction record. What are the events we do? What what does the user does? Simple, he creates it or he edits it or he deletes it. So, if you get into any user event script record, you have three uh, functions. One is before load, one is before submit, and another is after submit. So, just three functions, and but important functions. Before load, it's similar to page initialization. If you click on before load, event occurs whenever a read operation on a record occurs. So whenever you open a record, okay, it may be on view, view of a uh, invoice, or it can be create. You click on create and uh, it's loaded. So that's when uh, this before load function triggers. Before submit function. So 
where does this function triggers? Uh, when you click on the save button, even before, here you need to understand, okay, uh, that two, there's a difference between before submit and after submit. So you might think, okay, you submit, before submit, after submit should be same, anyways you are submitting the record. But there is a difference. Before submit function means your record is not yet submitted. For example, when you are trying to create an invoice, okay, you enter all the details in your invoice and you click on submit. So what, oh, you click on save button. So what happens? That save button submits this record. So this record gets saved. So before submit function means even before that record is submitted, you can perform any uh, logic on it, any uh, put any your business logic or any functionality on it. And what is after submit? After submit is when you click the save button, the record is submitted, okay? The record is submitted to the database, the next to database. And then you want to perform any function. So, even approaching the record is different. When you, uh, when you are on before submit function, the, your cursor is on the, on the page itself, on the record itself. So, when this before submit function triggers, so your cursor is still on the record. It's not yet submitted, okay? You, you, have, you might have clicked the save button, but it's not yet submitted. So, it's still on the cursor record. Now you can simply directly say NLAP get field value, it gives you a value. NLAP set field value, it sets a value. But when it comes to after submit function, okay, here where is the cursor? The cursor is not on the record. After submit function, the save button is clicked, okay, and record has been submitted to database. Now the cursor is not on the record, cursor is outside of the record, okay, outside, just staying outside of the records, or it's viewing the record, okay. Now, if after submit function triggers and your cursor is outside the record and you want to perform some logic on the record, what you need to do? First you need to load the record. First the record is submitted and your cursor is outside the record. So you need to load the record. So we have an API called NLAPI, NLAPI load record. And inside the parameters are type and ID. So again the type for type also we have a, a parameter called, we have a, a API called NLAPI get record type. And for even for ID you have NLAPI get record ID. Let me show you. Let me write and show you. So, NLAPI get record type. So this uh, this API gets the type type of transaction. How to determine the transaction? It can be PO or invoice anything, but your script is deployed on either one, right? Your script, the script record. I mean, the script record on the deployments. It will be see here. It's opportunity. So, it will be an opportunity. It gets opportunities type. Okay, get record type of opportunity to get, and then NLAPI get record ID. Okay, this gets the internal ID of that record, which is just saved. Gets ID of transaction. So, for example, you have a mm, sales order. Okay, sales order. You enter your value, data and you click save on it. It gets submitted. Okay, and after submit function, you have some. You put some logic inside the function. So, okay. So, uh, you have a you created script. On the script, uh, you had a function uh, after submit function. You deploy it on sales order. So, what happened whenever a sales order is Submitted. Next, it looks for the scripts where after which are deployed on sales order and where after submit function is mentioned. So, if there is such, those scripts will trigger. Those functions will be triggered. So, after triggering, the first thing, uh, first thing inside the function, if you are, if at all you are writing an after submit function script, the first thing you need to do is you need to load the record. If you want to perform anything on the record which is just saved, you need to load it. So, it's NL API. Load record. Again, I'm repeating. Don't get scared if you are not understanding it. This is just to add to your uh, knowledge base. Uh, if you are not understanding, don't don't worry. When you uh, see uh, listen all these recordings, you may understand little. And when you go get into a project and your support is initially helping you out with writing scripts, then you'll understand. When the support writes your script and you open the script, for example, he writes a user-driven script after submits function script, 
you see you'll see this as first three lines okay first what it does is uh, it takes a variable okay variable type type is the name of a variable which is a, a temporary uh, storage okay uh, is setting a record type on it and then where id okay you getting so you're getting the record type of the sales order into this type okay you are getting record id you cannot say uh, you you might think okay we know it's sales order why don't we just put sales order into an id but the thing is most of the times your script it's not only deployed on one record it might be deployed on multiple records right it may be deployed on sales order deployed on invoice deployed on po deployed on requisition anywhere so that's why it's always better for the script itself to get which record it is which record has been just submitted okay so that's why you, you get record type and also get the record id and now how do you load the record yeah record okay let's put the complete record into a variable called record and then your uh, api is an api load record and inside this the parameters are first one is type and then the id so you can take this one type and id okay so what is in type and let me get record type so whatever record you just submitted will get its type id whatever record you just sub, uh, submitted will get its id so for example if you have a sales order let's see if we have sales okay we have purchase order here okay so what will be the internal id of purchase order and type okay what is the type of this okay and what is internal id see these are internal id okay the second parameter will be this 1 and 2 now and the first parameter is type what is the type type is purchase order so how will you write a purchase order you can't directly write purchase order here when you click on and let get record type let's see what you're getting f12 in this work or do we need to edit it see purchase order so this is how you need to write okay the type type of this record is purchase order and this is how you need to write let me show you even the id What is the ID of this? One eight two nine. See, ID is always found in the URL. So this record will be loaded using this statement. Where record? So this record will be loaded, and all the and complete record will be on this variable. So now, if you want to get any field value, then what you do? Okay, where I want field value. Which field value do you want? Uh, you want the date. Okay. So you'll say, okay, where the date? I want the date on this from this record. So you should say record dot. Normally it's NLAPI get field value. So when you uh, when you do this like on a record you want this, you don't try type NLAPI. Okay, and even get it's it's not capital, it's small. Okay, get field value. Okay, and then you have the internal ID of the field, which field you want to get. It's standard. Control C. Okay, you want this field value. So now you'll get whatever value is there in here in here, 513-2016, you'll get it on this into this variable called date. So this is how you get it on after submit function. But if it's a before submit function, simple. You don't write, you don't need to load it. You just write, okay, I want uh, where date, okay equal to NLAPI get field value. So this is simple. T R A N okay standard. Now you might think why do we need after submit scripts? Why can't we always use before submit scripts? Of course before submit scripts we need not load the record. We just can directly give any uh, functionality hey set this value or get this value. But why do we why do we need after submit? So there's one catch. Remember, before submit means the record is not yet stored to the database, right? When record is not yet stored to the database, you won't have an ID generated. It will not be there in the ID. And when when does a record get ID? Only when it's stored in the database, you get an ID. So that's why whenever we are dealing with internal ID or something, uh, it's after submit. Only on after submit, you'll get all the field values. And also some of the fields uh, while you're doing before submit you may not get the value because it's not uh, the record is not yet submitted 
So that's the reason everybody uses after submit scripts. I mean after submit function. Because after submit function, you just need to load the record and you'll get all the fields, all the fields, including the ID. Okay, when you're doing when you're on before submit, the record is not yet submitted. So you it's ID is not yet generated. So you can only get few fields like whatever fields you just typed in, you just entered field values. Only those you can get and you can perform function uh, like your functionality on it. So that's the difference between after submit script and before submit script. And what is a before load script? Simple. Let me refresh this. This is before load. When you just load the record, the record has been just loaded. Okay. Or even you can do like this. You can sales, uh, sales order list. Okay. Hopefully we should see the list and view it. You can't edit on that. Okay. When you view a sales order. Now the sales order is loading, not the before load script executes. It's just loaded, right? Uh, your record is loaded. So this is where, when it's just loaded, you want to see some changes. Okay, when it's loaded, you want this class to be value to be changed. That's when you use before load. And also on before load, you need to mention type. The complete type is view over here. And if you click on edit, the type will be edit. And if we just come to transaction sales and uh, create and create uh, sorry enter sales orders, then your type is create. Type is created there. Here currently it's view. When you click on it, type is edit. So you need to mention the type, and on the type, uh, you give your logic. Okay, when it's view, I want uh, class to be something else. That you can set in uh, before load. So most of the time on before load, you can see it's not in edit mode. On view, it's not edit mode. So most uh, I'll even give you this example. So when you're trying, for example, you say I want to see something else instead of racks in the class. That's only done when you are on create or edit. Okay, you are on view mode here. View mode, you want to say, okay, I want to, see, I want to change this value. But for changing the value, you need to again open it and, I mean, uh, set the value and submit it. So what do we do with the on view mode? Most of the time on view mode, we create buttons. Okay, we add buttons. So that's what we do. On view mode, mostly it's just uh, adding a button. That's what we do in user event before load script. But on create and on edit, you can do a hell lot of things. Because on create and edit, the record is open. So, and just loaded it. So, you can put before load and you can, you can whatever logic you want, you can uh, set it inside the function. So, that's about user event scripts. We have just three. One is before load, which executes just on loading, loading of the record. Before submit, which executes just uh, on the click of save and before the record is submitted and after submit function uh, which executes after the record is of after click is after save button is clicked sorry after save button is clicked and the record has been saved to database then after submit function triggers and after triggering what happens whatever logic you have inside it, it just performs see this script here it says bef only before load function is uh, mentioned so what happens uh, and it's deployed on what opportunity. So whenever an opportunity is opened, this script executes. Actually, who wrote this script? Oh, okay, this is not next script. Maybe you can look into this script. Oh, good, it's very small, so, oh, good. See, we followed function. So what is it doing? This is a function, okay? You can see here, before load function, this is what I mentioned, and that is here, okay? Function, this one. You may think, what is all this? This is all crap, but it's, everybody <laughs> writes it. Uh, this is uh, every like you, you don't write straight away of a function and all your logic. It's like uh, it's a norm. Whenever you write a script on the top, you need to mention all crap. Okay, this is a module description. This is version one point oh. I am just writing the script for the first time, and I'm writing on this date. And author of the script is uh, this is my name. And normally you won't put any marks. And then, okay, this is also one more crap thing which you always write. Okay, what is this explanation? Okay, uh, this is applied on what? What is it? Okay, <laughs> this is see, there's nothing, there's nothing related. This is standard. Normally, this is standard. Uh, uh, when you write this, even you should mention okay, record type should be opportunity here because it's a deployed on opportunity. And types, okay, here type is said create and edit, so create and edit should be here. Everything is written, everything is present. So, which means this is a standard, he hasn't uh, changed it. You should if you are having this in the script, you should change it. You should change it and write whatever it's doing. Okay, 
let's say this guy did a mistake but doesn't matter even if you don't write all this crap and you just start with your function it's fine but they might think hey you start function you can try the module description maybe you are not a good developer maybe you yeah you doesn't go with uh, the rules instructions it's just a, a scripting instruction like starting you to mention the description of what you are writing the script what's in your inside the script on which record it's uh, deployed and what are the type what is the type of your script so this is all that documentation even within the script you can write documentation you can just put a two slashes and write your comments okay let's see what he is doing okay he has this okay the one before load of opportunity if type is create or edit he is adding a button okay form dot add button uh, button name is add to opportunity hmm, add to opportunity is a button Does make sense okay let's see if it's deployed or not in the deployments deployed released good okay let's see uh, transactions sales create okay it says create and what was that create and you right is it it's create and edit okay only on create and edit you'll see the button let's try this sales create opportunity when you tab see add to opportunity button is there okay good so this on create you can see the button because before load fun, uh, before on the load of this opportunity the script triggered and script uh, on before load it says add this button it's added okay and it says type is edit and uh, create and edit right okay now let's do one thing we okay let's go to list of opportunities sales opportunity list okay let's try to edit a opportunity see the button should be there okay we're doing edit okay now the button should be there okay add to opportunity is there okay now let's do one thing just go to view you should not see the button because the script doesn't mention view let's do list and let's do view can you see the button add to opportunity here see it's not visible why it's not visible because the script is only on edit and create if type is create or edit only then this button is there on view it's not there see but you may think hey you just said well, on view you create buttons yes but this guy's requirement is different. <laughs> he wanted the button to be available only on create and edit. So that's why it's not there. On view. What mostly you won't be scripting much on view. Only on create or edit, uh, you'll have, you'll put all your functionality that business wants. Very rarely you'll have something on view. Okay, so these are about user event scripts before load, before submit, and after submit. Now let's look at another script type. Uh, what well, is the third one? Suitlet. Okay, as I told you, what is a suitlet? This is where it's interactive. Uh, if you want a f uh, web page to be created or you want a pop up to be created, that's when you use the suitlet. For this, let's go to help and see some examples because writing a suitlet it takes time. Okay. Suitlet. Okay, see, so, suitlets. What are suitlets? Let's see this so that you can understand more clearly. Suitlets are extensions of suite script API that give developers the ability to build custom NetSuite pages, as I said, web pages and backend logic. Okay. Suitlets are server side script that operate on request response model. Just remember this request and response model. That's it. Nothing else required to be remembered. Okay, only remember suitlets. What do they do? Ability to build custom NetSuite pages and backend logic. They operate in request response model. Okay. Uh, we also have example. We just have pages created here. It's called suitlet get call. Three fields are present, and once we are just set by user and click submit, and they should then script will be executed. Just a second, uh, please bear with me. I'm back. Uh, sorry for that. My son was <laughs> has puked all over the house. <laughs> So see, this is a suitlet. Uh, they created a web page and uh, get call. Okay, taking the data on post call, it's showing the values. Okay, this is how it works. Okay, let's try to understand this suitlet. Okay, on suitlet, there's only one function. Okay, there's no functions on suitlet. Go to any suitlet view. See, there's only one function. And what kind of function? Nothing. It's just suitlet function. Okay, let's see what's there on the suitlet function. 
okay it's saying okay request dot get method okay yes it's every every time so it should start with a get method okay create the form and add fields to it okay this is how it's done uh, variable form create let me create form okay this is a form name okay get suit let call you can see here at the top suit let get call okay and then uh, form dot add field okay on this form is adding fields three fields are added see text field integer integer field and select field how are they added this internal id we just give any internal id on the on the field and then what is data type and what is the label of the field okay and then it's saying set default value okay this on field this field value is setting the value a default value and even on this is setting default value uh, over here is not setting anything okay it's a select over here see the record type is uh, the data type is select so what is what select customer so list by record customer will be set on this field called select field over here you can see drop down so it's a customer drop down on integer field what is it doing set default value 10 so it means okay integer only 10 digits okay only maximum 10 digits can be entered that's what it says so default value of 10 digits okay and then it's doing okay form dot add submit button and submit okay and the button is set here and response dot write page dot form that's it this page is created now and then on post call okay uh, else okay this is how you write, you write uh, this ends your get okay and then your post it says else now get inside the post actually it's doing the same thing okay okay this is just the request then yeah this is just get where is it post okay so you just write everything within okay I see this f is if statement is completed here okay get and complete and then you say else and uh, what is your result of that's what you write what is it say and let me create form okay and then uh, form it add field yes it's adding a field setting the form so again again creating the same thing okay okay it's, it's creating the same thing nothing else Same data, so default value. Okay, you may not understand this. Even I am not understanding it from this example. So, okay, I'll show you a simple example, uh, which one of my friend just showed few days back. Okay, this one looks good. Okay, what my friend has done is see this one. He created a function. Okay, suited function. If request dot get uh, method is get okay fine. He's creating a form and name of the form is click submit to create invoices, and he's creating uh, two three fields I guess yeah three fields. First field is a uh, radio is nothing but a checkbox. Radio means uh, how do you say a dot like for example you go to any uh, Microsoft Word and you'll have a bullet right a bullet like within a bullet you can click the bullet and it checks so that is called radio button and then we have he created check okay he created three fields like this one that okay this is a bullet right but in between there's a space so you just click on it right so even when you fill some forms some online forms or any forms anyway you might have come come across such a selection there's a round circle and you select inside it so that is called radio selection okay he created three fields okay two are those radio selections and one is checkbox and he, he, he provided uh, the label of the field okay and then he even gave the value okay t1 and t2 is the values of this both uh, layout type it's normal uh, default value to t2 okay this all you be defaulted to t2 and he's having a checkbox called clear invoices okay form dot submit okay he's doing submit button Form dot set script. Okay, there's another there's a script uh, which is set. He's triggering that. It's not triggering. He said okay, that script should be set on this. That should the script should work on this form. That's what he's saying. And he says uh, re response uh, right right page form, which means okay, the form is now created. The form will be up for display. Then what is he doing? He says else. Okay. Uh, okay. Now he's getting the values. Okay, see now this is a clear example. We can easily understand what's happening. 
So in a suite let in the first get method get function or get get block. Okay, first we create the page itself. Here is creating a page, giving name, creating three fields with all the information. I mean it's not setting any value. Okay, but it's providing values. Okay, radio button and okay checkbox uh, is providing three fields options. Uh, two radio checking and third one is just checkbox. He is giving you a submit button and then a script should be uh, working on this uh, page and then response not right this is how this is a, a syntax like when you get this this line if request dot get method equal to get and response dot write uh, page dot form these are syntax so when you give this this syntax response dot write page which means okay you're done creating the page and this page is up for display okay then you close this one then you create else okay within else what happens if that submit is clicked okay that's what you take that's what uh, like a user is entering values or anybody's checking those three values and clicking on submit and then what happens then this else block executes first thing what it does is okay request dot get parameter okay what is being selected in this field comes into this variable okay what is being selected in this field this checkbox comes into this parameter Okay, and then uh, it's creating a parameter which it's, it's a new array. Okay, and within that, uh, again, it's giving any uh, any ID. Uh, and then it's doing this value, comma, and this value. Okay, this value is saying uh, if this variable value is equal to null, okay, then false should be the value. Or else true should be the value. Okay, so this checkbox value. Okay, checkbox value is it can be checked or not checked. If it's if the value is blank, then f should be the value, or else t. If value if it's checkbox is checked, t should be the value. Okay, so what will be there in this uh, parameter? This parameter name he gave he gave a uh, parameters an array. In the array he created a field name. Okay, any field name in, within the field he's providing he's put setting this value this value is nothing but the first value which we have in here and then comma is setting the second value which is the checkbox value okay we have this value inside this parameter array then what is it doing then okay it's calling a schedule script okay that's our next script type which we are going to see so it's calling a schedule script here's a schedule script a internal id and null and parameters okay Parameters are nothing but this. So he's passing this information. So what is he doing when when a user selects his options out of those three fields, click submit. What did he select? That value is captured, okay, and that value is stored in a parameter array, okay, and that parameter array is again passed to a scheduled script. A scheduled script is called, okay. Then what's happening here? Okay, the scheduled script will be triggered, and then here form dot create form okay click close okay again is creating a form now so click close button to close the suite and process will continue to run in the background now add the add a button call close again is setting this script to be present for this form and then is ending ending this uh, loop so what happens is in this block the page is created with three field values on submit button okay and in this block uh, you give any values to those three fields and click submit those three values are taken, captured, and they are put in a parameter, okay, which is this one. And that parameter is sent to a scheduled script and called that scheduled script. The scheduled script will be triggered here, okay. And that is in background. The scheduled script is triggered. That will that will take care of its uh, operation. And now on our present cursor page, okay, where we have what what should happen here? This page will be changed after submit. Uh, as soon as the submit is button is clicked. This everything is uh, executed within like uh, many milliseconds, and then within a blink of eye, this will be executed. Again, a new page will be in front of you, saying "click close button" to close the suite light, and process will continue. And then, if you click on the button, and that will be closed. Just close on click close. So on click close, what what happens on on click close? Okay, he said there is a. That's a script, right? Which he is sitting on this form. Let's see. I also have that script. On click close. Is on click close present here? On click clear all is present. Like close. Oh, close is here. Good. So what does it do? 
window dot open self close so it, it just this one just uh, gets you to the home page so if this function is uh, mentioned anywhere anyways this is getting recorded so you can uh, once you play the recording you can see this so we know this function is used i will take you to home page okay so what's happening here uh, when the data is captured and sent to schedule script for the functionality to run and then your present on your present page as soon as you click submit will be shown a page saying hey click close button and then there's a close button and what happens when you click the close button and that's why here is setting a uh, this must be a client script okay a client script and on the client script he's setting a function uh, on click close and he won't select any function you might think okay on client script we have save page in it all those so he won't select any function over there and the client script will not even be deployed okay just a client script will be created remember this because You'll come across this and you'll uh, not understand why is there a client script where a script file is attached but no function is mentioned it's not even deployed that is used for these cases for this kind of suite lets okay uh, and what uh, why is he using here because uh, when this close button this page is created okay hey click close button to close the suite let and it will take care of the functionality within the schedule script and there's a button of close you click the close button what should happen now that's why this client script has that it has this on click close and that's just taking you to the home page that's it and then again this response dot write page form this is compulsory so we will get on post okay so this is a suite let and then uh, what is this next next step is schedule script okay see this we this suite let is calling a schedule script a schedule script is triggered and it is fed at some data. What data is fed? It's fed at this kind of data. Let's mm, fed at this data from these two uh, fields. Okay. So what happens in the schedule script? Okay, schedule script has these two values as parameters. Parameters. Where is that? If you go to schedule script, you will see parameters. Even every script type has parameters. You can see here. This is called parameters. You can create parameters here. So this suitlet has called the schedule script and schedule script has parameters sent file sent by this script. Let's open any any schedule script. See over parameters. So here those parameters will be created from the script. Over you'll have you'll see a new field called cust script param uh, params and it will have that value. You won't see the value here, but just the uh, field will be created. Okay, it should always be there. Whenever this schedule script is called by a suitlet and the suitlet is passing on any parameters, you should you are you are supposed to create a parameter here. And then even in schedule script, you'll have a you'll create a new function. Within the function, you'll have your logic. And in that logic, you can make use of the parameters. Okay, get the parameters and whatever business logic. For example, I'll give you uh, I'll tell you one logic. So what is he doing here? Mm, okay, forget this one. So for example, like. Okay, uh, then you can create a suite that can create a page. Okay, uh, you can there can be two fields. One is called uh, invoice, and the other is called status. Okay, and on the invoice, uh, the user enters an invoice number, and in status he enters an okay approved, and then the submit button, and he clicks the button. Okay, and the second part of the suite that what it does, it takes these two values. Okay, invoice, uh, this invoice, okay, invoice number and the status approved. And those two are passed to a schedule script as parameters. Okay, and what does the schedule script do? Uh, it starts its function. First, it gets both those two parameters. Okay, we have invoice number and the status called approved. What should we do now? Okay. This might be a scenario. Okay, the schedule script uh, may search searches on the invoice record for this invoice number. Okay, and finds that record with that invoice number. On that record, it might open that record, load it. Uh, see if there is any status field. On status field, select approved value and just save it. That's it. This might be one requirement. Okay. So this is how it works. And schedule script is not only meant for this purpose. This is rare uh, need of a schedule script. But 99% what do schedule scripts do? So you have any functionality. For example, every day morning 10 o'clock, uh, your NetSuite should. Uh, go through all the invoices created yesterday and up just approve them or just delete them Like this is an example. Okay, or else uh, You have a journal entry. Okay, 
all the journal entries created from January 1st of this year till yesterday. You need to get a, uh, all those, you need to get a list of all those channels, and go to each and every channel and set some field value. Okay? Set some field value. So this can might be a requirement. So for those purpose, you have a schedule script. So schedule script triggers on a particular time. Apart from okay, it's been called from a suit let or even user event scripts to call schedule script. So okay, it's it's been called from some other scripts, then it's fine. Okay, when it's called, this it performs whatever is there in this function. But apart apart from that, schedule script when it's standalone schedule script, okay, not called by any other script. What happens? Uh, how what what does it perform? So on deployment, you have a deployment. Okay, this is not deployed in any record. Okay, this is just, you can see the schedule same name. Schedule job process order schedule today, same thing. Okay, whenever you create schedule script, when you say deploy script, or you get into deployment, say you create deployment from here, uh, you can title you can give the same title of the script, and within that, you provide a schedule. Okay, see single event, or daily event, or weekly event, or monthly event, or yearly event, and on what date should it start, and what time should it start, and repeat. In under repeat, you have every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every one hour, every four hours, just like that. You can select any. And end by so when do you want this script functionality to be ending? No end date. Click on this no end date. Okay. So according to the schedule, if they, we say single event on 6 9 2016, okay, it was or last and then it was June 9th on that day at 8 o'clock, this script was triggered. So script got triggered, and with the, with the script, uh, there should be some criteria. Okay, good. There's some criteria. Let's see what is this script doing. Perfect example. Okay. Only execute when the run or when run from scheduler. Okay, if type is equal to schedule and type is not equal to script return. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Okay, what is he doing? Okay, he's creating a filter. Okay, he must be doing search. Okay, he's doing search. See, this criteria is search. Uh, okay, on sales order is searching. Uh, main line is true. Okay, that's to get because if sales order has 10 lines, the result should not show 10 lines, it should show only one line. So that's why main line is true is used. Okay, then trend date is equal to okay. He's getting all the sales order created today. Okay, he, he triggered the script on July June 9th uh, on at 8 p.m. So whatever sales orders were created on that day till that time would come in this search results. Okay, and he's he's doing this. Okay, for each search result, this is the uh, formula for variable i equal to zero and if search results not null and I is less than search results dot search okay if there is only one sales order then what okay i is zero zero less than length is one okay and one result uh, zero is less than one satisfies okay then gets inside this uh, for loop okay that get the id of that search results i is zero okay so first result oops result. so first result it gets internal id of sales order okay it's an id variable you have the sales order internal id and then transform record okay it's using the api Called transform record. It, it transforms record from one record like sales order to fulfillment or sales order to invoice. Or we can we can use this. So he's transforming the sales order and sales order internal ID. He's transforming it into item fulfillment. Good. And submit the record item fulfilled record. Okay, this is the record. Okay, this way. Really. Good. So he's converting all the sales orders created on that day into fulfillments. Good. And then what is he doing? Search results get value. Okay, getting some value called payment method. If it's null, then use invoice or else, or else cash line, cash sale. Okay, that's the value is taking into bill type. Bill record. LAP transform record. Oh, he's not even not only transforming the sales order into in fulfillment. He's also transforming the sales order into bill. Wow. Okay. Okay. What is bill type here? If payment method is invoice, then invoice will be created. If payment method is cash sale, cash sale will be created. Okay. And he's submitting that record. So, what is this schedule script doing now? On June 9th at 8 p.m., the script got, got triggered. Okay, it's only one time event, single event. And within the script, what is he doing? He is creating a search on sales order, created on that particular day. Okay. He gets like for example five or ten, how many maybe he get all the sales orders in the results. And in that, he's going to each and every record. Okay, he is going to each and every record. And each and every record firstly is converting into item fulfillment for sure. Okay, he's doing every record, every record mandatorily he's converting them into item fulfillment file. Then he's looking on a field called this payment method. If it has 
if it is blank we are using it as invoice or else if there is a value set on it we is taking cash sale as a value okay and this both uh, the value set in build type then it is converting this I mean not converting it is creating a uh, invoice or cash sale from this sales order so the whole thing what is doing is getting the sales order created on the particular day uh, creating fulfillments for the sales orders and then based upon a field value is creating either invoices for the sales orders or cash sale for the sales order okay that's what is doing in this scale script and just remember most of the times if for example you created like 10 scripts in one month uh, most common scenarios five or six scripts out of those 10 will be creating schedule scripts okay and even integrations when you have uh, your data going from NetSuite to other applications or coming from other applications to NetSuite and mostly you will do schedule scripts there is also one more script type called restlet I told you I guess a couple of times that I used only once restlet restlet is nothing but sending data from your NetSuite to other third party application but you will use uh, URL, ID, password and then at the other place at the third party place somebody has to receive it and he has to do whatever has to be done with the data but when you use a schedule script, you don't need a ID, password, anything. Okay, only the only they, they will give you a uh, key, URL and a key. Uh, if you're connecting, for example, there's a application called Coupa. Okay, that is a recruitment tool, and you'll have invoices in Coupa coming into NetSuite as vendor bill, or you'll create a vendor payment in NetSuite and it goes into Coupa as vendor payment. Okay. So when that data is sent and brought, we use schedule script. I mean, I've used it in one of my client, uh, past client uh, places. So what we do is a schedule script, how it makes connect contact with that uh, third party. Again, this within parameters, uh, we create that. Within parameters, we have okay URL of that third party application, then we have a key. So that third party will give us a key. Hey, this is your key. This is only for us, our company, they give us a key. So using that key and the URL, we connect, we make a connect using schedule script and we send data and we receive data. So schedule scripts are even used for integration job. And most of the bundles that you take, uh, like this implementation, social, root social, fixed assets, we get a lot of bundles, right? We, we install a lot of bundles. And nowadays all bundles, if for sending data from NetSuite to third party or for processing data or anything, they use schedule scripts. Most of the time they use schedule script. So they don't use restlets. Very rare when if any bundle is using restlet, they don't use. So schedule scripts in past few years, schedule scripts have been used for integration rather than restlet. So if at all you talk to a vendor or you get onto a client location, hey, they'll say, have you used restlet? You should say, no, I haven't used restlet. Uh, I've used mostly schedule scripts. They'll say, okay, how did you connect using schedule script? I got, we used to get URL and the uh, keys, like API key. Third party, they used to give, a, they used to provide a unique key for us, for our instance, for our NetSuite instance. We used to use that key and that uh, URL and we used to connect and we used to send data and receive data. They might ask you, hey, how did you send? How did you receive? Okay, we sent using XML tags. That's it. Use XML tags and send them. And they might ask, okay, how did you uh, put in your filters, like your criteria? Then you should say, okay, URL. When we make a URL call uh, to other URL, we add our filters so that we get the data what we want. It's like that. So when we are getting data within the URL, we put filters, hey, this is what we want. So we'll get the data from third party. And we, when we are sending it to the third party, we'll just put the, our, uh, like, if we are sending any sales order data to third party, more fields of sales order we put in XML tags. Uh, it's called post data. Okay, we use post data method to uh, so we put all the field values in tags and we just use post data function to send data to the third party application. So remember these things. These things will help you out when you get onto your projects. So certainly you guys will uh, hear this class recordings at least once or twice. So this is about schedule scripts. What do schedule scripts do? When triggered, whatever logic is present inside the function it gets executed. So few few scenarios. Okay, it can be called from any 
suite late or usually when in that scenario it's not a schedule whenever they call it should perform whatever is the, the function that is one and secondly when there's a schedule okay this this day this time or every day this time it triggers and whatever logic is present inside the function it gets triggered and third scenario is okay if we connect the schedule script to any third party application uh, using a key and a url and we send data using uh, xml tags and post data thing method or else we get data from third party and when we call the url we put filters with the url and then third party they send us the data that we need so three scenarios but most in mostly you'll be using the scheduled one okay most of times you'll be using okay you set a schedule okay that's when the script should trigger and what should the script do and most of the time you start a schedule script using a search even here you've seen right this one starts using a search so schedule script 99.9% .9 of the time schedule script starts with a search for sure okay so that's about schedule scripts so let's wind up the class today and tomorrow one more one thing I will show you two things within schedule script okay there are two problems most of like it, you'll face it all the time while you're building a schedule script two problems you'll face all the time and how to overcome the two problems I will tell you tomorrow okay we'll start the class uh, with seeing those two problems and how to overcome that and then what are our left what script types are left for us to look into is everyone's done okay let's go talk Suited is done just like I said it's not required I just used it once in my life so if you want you can go to help and you can look at a registered example user event we looked into it schedule we looked into it client we looked into it so what are left schedule we'll see the two the two the two issues which you'll all every time face and how to uh, how, how to get around it okay then what do we have portlet good tomorrow I'll show you a portlet example from my experience okay I'll try to get those <laughs> scripts in uh, what you say in notepad and then i'll try to execute in front of you so that you get to know what the portlet does mass update script even this one i'll get you an example okay tomorrow we'll finish off this both portlet and mass update scripts then you don't need to look into bundle installation map reduce map reduce is 2.0 bundle installation nobody uses in bundle installation script everybody does bundle manually they create and manually install and then we'll be left out with only workflow action so the apps tomorrow before looking into workflow action script we should look into workflows so tomorrow is Tuesday. Tuesday we'll finish the portlet and mass update after looking into the two issues of uh, scheduled. And then on Wednesday we'll look into workflows and workflow action scripts. By that we'll finish our uh, training. And as I sent you guys, as I sent the first assignment to you guys, please start working on it because that's not everything. Uh, maybe I'll be sending out two more assignments to you so that all the admin tasks you'll be familiar with. You'll at least practice it once. And once again, uh, don't all, not only do your assignment, since the file has assignment to everybody. So you can look, okay, what task was given to another person in this group. And you can even try to create that, replicate that. But don't use the same names. Change the name or add one or two or something at the end. And try to practice even those tasks, okay? So uh, let's wind up this session and uh, see you guys tomorrow. And re regarding the recordings, yeah. So I have two more days of training. So by the time our training ends, you'll get all your recordings, okay? And even after the training is done, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email and I'll always respond back and uh, within 24 hours, okay? I may not open this email uh, most of the day, during most of the day, but at least once a day, I check these emails, check the emails to my uh, email ID. So I'll respond back and if required, I'll set up a go-to meeting just with one-on-one on, one on one only. Uh, Personally, if you have any question, just for you, I'll have a good meeting and I'll spare some time and I'll uh, clear your doubts. Okay? And first, before coming to me, you can always check with your uh, other uh, classmates or this group mates. And if you work together, we can uh, solve each other's uh, issues, questions or doubts. Okay then, I'll wind up this. See you all tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye guys. Yeah.